good afternoon good uh, dear students uh, welcome back to uh, post lens session uh, today sessions uh, in this uh, session you will get important informations like academic regulations outcome based education and uh, university ranking uh this session will be handled by our internal faculty members uh, uh, university officials so first session uh, by dr b manoj kumar sir uh, is dean academics uh, jss stu uh, he will give information about uh, academic regulations so next information will be given by other faculty members sir uh, i welcome you for the session thank you sir ஒர்க்கிங்ஸ்டிவிட்டிஸ்ட்டிவிட்டி i hope uh, you have all adjusted to our uh, university environment and we have uh, two academic institutes in the same premises one is shri jayachamarajendra college of engineering which is 60 years old and it is a constituent college of jss science and technology university and this university is located in the same campus so uh, promoters you all visited uh, suttur yeah uh, so founder of suttur math is uh, is holiness jagadguru shri shivaratri shwara shivyogi ma swami ji galu and uh, jss mahavidya peetha is the one uh, which uh, takes care of all uh, in uh, the educational institutes under suttur math and is holiness jagadguru dr shri shivaratri rajendra ma swami ji galu uh, he established jss mahavidya peetha to make education accessible to all sections of society and present pontifex is holiness jagat guru shri shri shivaratri deshikendra maha swami ji galu so jss mahavidya peetha as i told many institutions are there and 350 plus institutions are run by mahavidya peetha in india and abroad with 9000 plus employees and 150000 plus students studying in various education institutes there are two universities one is this university jss science and technology university the other one is jss academy of higher education and research that is also located in mysore Uh, near banni mandap that is medical and life sciences institutes and there are three engineering colleges one here one at bangalore and the other one at noida and there are several pharmacy colleges hospitals schools pu colleges and others and jss mahavidya peetha is promotes uh, arts culture music literature yoga as well as uh, philanthropic and uh, spiritual activities coming to our university jss science and technology university there are two three divisions in our university one is technical education that is engineering the other one is sciences and the third one is management studies so we have uh, 13 bachelor of engineering programs bachelor of computer applications is there and uh, we have added from this year 
Bachelor of Business Administration and Bachelor of Sciences. Coming to PG programs, we have 16 Master of Technology programs and uh, Master of Science 13. We have Master of Computer Applications, then Master of Business Administration, six programs. And uh, we have PhD programs in all disciplines. And these are some of the UG programs we have in our uh, university at SJC and STU. And other programs include BSc, BCA, and BBA. And out of engineering programs, 13 engineering programs, six are accredited by, accredited by National Board of Accreditation. And these are the programs, PG programs, MTech programs, including MCA, offered at SJC and Science and Technology Universities. And MSc Science programs, we have 12 programs and we have added from this year few more programs uh, coming to oh sorry sorry <laughs> okay i'm very sorry <laughs> okay uh, coming to uh, regulations i will show you the regulations book later on uh, how the curriculum teaching and learning process takes place in our university for all programs. It might be uh, undergraduate or postgraduate. The teaching process include the department will have its own academic calendar based on university academic calendar. I will show you first year academic calendar. And based on academic department calendar, course allotment will be there. Say, for example, now you are on uh, in first year, whatever the courses that are there in first year, allotment will be there in the department to each faculty member. And after the allotment, timetable will be prepared and uh, course teaching plan will be prepared by respective faculty members. Okay. After that, content delivery will be there from first working day onwards. And uh, during content delivery, there will be evaluation and grading. Evaluation, we have two types of evaluation. One is continuous internal evaluation. The other one is semester end examination. Coming to learning process in our university, so there will be mini and major projects, group discussions, internship and industry visits by respective departments, technical forums will be there and competitions will be held in the department level. So guest lectures and invited talks will be arranged by the department. Normally alumni will come and uh, share their experience. We have digital library access to you all. And NPTEL Swayam course you can take. Okay, I'll come later on what are the advantages of taking these courses. And we have cooperative learning and problem-based learning. This is the learning process for students. This is teaching process. Now, coming to curriculum, Whatever it might be, what program like BCA or BE or MTech or MSc, this is the procedure followed at the university. Say, for example, if it is existing curriculum, 
then we will map with PO, PSO and PEOs and uh, course outcomes. After mapping, draft curriculum will be prepared and this draft curriculum will be placed in BOS and uh, department advisory board as well as stakeholders. They all give their opinion on draft curriculum. Stakeholders including students, uh, parents, alumni, industry and uh, others. Okay, once the feedback is taken for draft curriculum, based on the feedback, we'll fine tune the syllabus and we'll keep it in academic council for approval, followed by board of management. After that, final curriculum is prepared. For undergraduate programs, last curriculum was 2020 and later on it was reviewed and 2022 syllabus is there 2022 scheme that will be there for you all similarly for bca uh, 23 is the new curriculum for you all okay that is reviewed curriculum for undergraduate programs the credit distributions for uh, one to eight semester is like this and the total 175 credits you have to earn for obtaining a degree okay this is regular students not for uh, lateral entry students okay and this 175 credits it distributed as per aact category like humanities and social sciences including management courses we have scheduled uh, eight credits for that basic science courses like physics chemistry mathematics and others 25 credits engineering science courses 23 credits and uh, coming to professional courses we have divided into four types one is three types one is professional core course professional elective and open elective so that comprises of 70, 18 and 15 uh, credits. Then final year, you have project work, internship seminar of 15 credits. And there are some mandatory courses, including uh, BC for BCA program, like environmental studies, constitution of India. These are all mandatory courses. And that is as per AACT, we are following. And total will be 175 credits for BE programs. Uh, coming to BCA, I will show you later on because you are following uh, NEP uh, structure. For BE and BCA, the syllabus will be prepared like this. So department, course code, total credits, course type, course type, whether it is humanities or social science, basic science, they have to mention whatever it is. Course title will come here and teaching learning process. We have three parts. One is lecture. The second one is tutorial and the third one is practical for each. How many contact hours will be provided that will be mentioned here and credits also. Okay. Suppose if it is three credit scores, if it is three credit scores, total contact hours will be 39. Okay. And that 39 will be divided as lecture, tutorial and practical. Okay. If it is only lab course, then these two will be blank and only practical course number of hours will be mentioned here. And very important is we have two type of evaluation one is continuous internal evaluation the other one is semester end examination this is common for bca as well as b programs and the weightage what we give for cie and SCE is 40 percent 60 percent so total will become 100 percent this you should be very clear okay Maximum marks for continuous internal evaluation is 40 marks and 50% they have to earn like for eligible for examination, final ACE. So they have to score minimum of 
20 marks. SCE, it is for 60 marks, that is 60% weightage, and minimum what they have to earn is 25 marks. So, for passing for each course, for passing for each course, minimum of 45 you have to score. Minimum 45. Now, very important thing is for passing the student has to score a minimum of 45 marks in a combination of SI, CIE and SE. That is, if you score 20 marks here in CIE, you have to score 25 marks so that passing marks will become 45. Suppose if you score 21 marks here, minimum SE you have to score is 24 so that 45 will be the passing marks. This is very important. Okay. Now, uh, the syllabus for each course will follow this structure. So, the first one will be course prerequisite for each course. Course objectives will be mentioned and course outcomes will be mentioned. Like course outcomes, uh, normally 5 will be there depending on the course, type of course. And uh, highest level of cognitive domain will be mentioned. Anyhow, in the next uh, uh, presentation, you will learn more on OBE. Uh, this is the levels and they will mention for CO1, uh, whether it is L1 or L4, for CO3, whether L6 or uh, L2, likewise they will mention in for each course. And the content, normally it will be 5 units, normally it will be 5 units, if it is a theory course. And if it is only lecture hours, they will mention here. If they make some tutorial classes in their course content, they will mention how much lecture hours and how much tutorial hours in this syllabus. And this is followed by references, textbooks, reference books, journals and magazines, web digital resources, Swayam NPTEL. Practice based learning, like in practice based learning, they will mention, mention what topics will be there for practice based learning and what tools you have to follow and expected skill and ability that will be mentioned in your syllabus book. And self learning exercise like case study projects, mini projects, or any others that will be mentioned in your syllabus. This is about syllabus and scheme. Very important thing is this Swayam and NPTEL. Swayam and NPTEL, this will be offered from third semester onwards. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, up to six semesters, you can take Swayam and NPTEL, that is AACT courses, and for 12 weeks, if you attend that course and qualify that course, the grade card will be given by Swayam and NPTEL. And that grade card, if you submit to university, one of the professional elective in the seventh semester, you will be exempted. Three credits, professional elective in the seventh semester will be exempted that is there. So, from third semester onwards, you can take Swayam and NPTEL courses and for 12 weeks minimum, you have to attend and pass. And if you are not happy with the grades, what you get from Swayam NPTEL, this is offered by mostly uh, IIT or NIT professors. Okay. If you are not happy with your score, you can leave it and you can take one professional elective in the seventh semester. You, you are clear, no? Okay. So, this is very important and uh, so try to take some courses, not regular courses and your department 
coordinator and mentor will tell you what course you have to take and how it will help your career okay similarly bca students that is not considered for great card but you can take but you can take nptel swayam courses and that uh, certificates will carry a lot for your career development so any doubts in uh, scheme and syllabus are 175 credits you can ask me like so courses will be of different types humanities will be there sciences will be there engineering sciences will be there core courses will be there professional core professional elective in professional elective from third semester onwards including bca and be program you will be given three courses to choose from one professional elective you can choose any one by looking at syllabus and uh, open electives will be there open electives the advantage is suppose if you are a computer science engineering student or mechanical engineering student and if you want to learn something uh, some course on uh, uh, say uh, waste management or e waste management okay are sustainable development uh, courses okay so you can choose it will be offered in the entire university under uh, various programs they will offer 3 to 4 uh, courses each semester from 5th uh, semester onwards 5th 6th and 7th in 5th semester there will be one open elective in 6th semester there will be two open electives and in the 7th semester there will be two open electives hmm? so you can plan from 5th semester onwards so that you can plan for your final year project if you learn something from 5th semester onwards in your project work you can use that like we have electric mobility ev e vehicles course or uh, illumination technology disaster management many courses will be offered and you can choose similarly bca also from uh, third semester you have open electives so coming to quality assessment as i told CIE and CE are the evaluation methods. CIE is continuous internal evaluation, and you, two tests will be conducted. Two test and one event will be conducted. The first event will be test one. The second event will be any event, depending on the course tutor or uh, course. the third will be again test all three will be combined and for 40 marks the evaluation marks will be finalized and it will be sent to university and minimum scoring mark should be 20 this is common for bca and be programs and sce there will be two parts part a and part b in part a five questions will be there all are compulsory questions choose chosen from all units if you have five units five units from each unit normally one question will be there and part b there will be internal choice for each question there will be two questions okay that is uh, sixth there will be two questions seventh there will be two questions you can choose one that is internal choice and the total marks conducted will be 100 and that will be converted to 60 marks and 40% is the passing marks 
So, 40 percent of 60 is how much? 24. So, minimum you have to score 24 in SE. So, minimum of uh, CIE is 20 and SCE is 24, but passing marks for each course is 45. Passing marks for each course is 45. So, either you have to score 21 and 24 in CIE and SCE or 20 and 25 in CIE and SCE to pass the course. So, apart from this, we have uh, seminars and projects, quiz and assignments are part of uh, CIE, tutorials will be there, then industry visits will be there. Uh, this is how uh, student quality assessment will be made. This is uh, grading marks. This is what I said. CIE for 40 marks, 2 tests 30 marks and 1 even 10 marks. Total will be 40. And for semester end examination, part A will be 50 marks. 5 questions will be there each of 10. And part B with internal choice, again 5 questions and total under reduced to 60 marks. And 40% is the minimum to pass, year 50% to minimum the pass. And these are the grades provided from F to S. Okay. Any uh, controller of examination will be making presentation on this. And I will quickly um, go through. So, our institute is uh, accredited by many agencies like NIRF, NBA and uh, rankings from other agencies we have got and uh, we have been recognized by ACT, Government of Karnataka and uh, World Bank and some of the MOU partners. Uh, these are the, the last year MOU partners, including international, like Russia, we have, USA, we have, Malaysia, Singapore, these are all international. And uh, in the year 2021 and 1920, and one important thing is coming to academic, whatever the MOU is done with the industry or organization, it will be linked to academic activity. Say, for example, we have an MOU with uh, Bosch Global uh, Software and uh, we are offering an elective automotive cyber security. Okay, that is professional elective course. And uh, applied materials industry seminar is there on semiconductor technology and HPE is the industry offering another industry elective called cloud computing. Uh, similarly, Nokia solutions, they are offering one elective on advanced 5G. Likewise, in the individual departments, the MOU will be linked to academic activities and some of the facilities, madam, if they really there are facilities, around the 10 minutes alive. So, we have a library with uh, 1,36,000 volumes of uh, textbooks and uh, 2,500 reference books uh, and membership of Delnet is there for database services and we have NPTEL course lecture series to access for uh, video lectures. We have L Center just in front of our university. Cultural and literary activities will be conducted by the university and ERP system is there. And uh, financial support will be provided by university for student clubs and their activities. And you have seen uh, our university more than 50% of the area is covered by greenery with native species. And ours is plastic free campus, single use plastics, you should not bring it to our campus. Okay. 
and we have for waste management composting units rain water harvesting facility is followed in many buildings storm water management system is there and ro drinking water facility is provided in different academic blocks of the university in the main building where principal office is located we have solar power plant in the rooftop with 595 kilowatts and solar cooking in girls hostel and uh, whatever the e-waste generated from our university it will be disposed as per uh, pollution control board norms and these are some of the common facilities like boys hostel hostel mess sports this is the seminar hall where you are sitting and stc step is there in front of our university building bank and amenities are there commercial activities and uh, girls hostel and in the hostel block we have vip rooms and mess and indoor games also is there in the campus and you will be given access to internet through wi-fi uh, facility and digital library is there to access for e-journal books and magazines and uh, in the department any fdp or special or invited talks are conducted and you will be part of it and most important thing is we give encouragement for students to participate in the internship and industry visits internship is very important and it is part of your curriculum and we have well established uh, laboratories and in the same building we have jss multimedia resource center which is established at a cost of 1.2 crores and most of the classrooms are with uh, digital smart boards and some of the core committees student clubs available and these are all active clubs and you can all involve in these clubs and coming to practices NEP model, National Educacy, Education Policy model is followed in BCA curriculum and MSc and BSc curriculum and all the course curriculum is uh, mapped with UN Sustainable Development Goals and we follow OBE and uh, choice based credit system, NSS and NCC units are there and we will provide skill based training and then a blended mode of teaching is available and student clubs as i mentioned in the previous and this is very important is single use plastics you should not bring it to campus so this is about my presentation quickly i will show you the uh, regulations of both bca and uh, b I size that this is regulations governing the degree of Bachelor of Engineering and this was formulated in the year 2018-19 when the university was established and after that several amendments this is available in the website and this for this regulation several amendments have been made okay that amendments will be there in university notices that is there in university website quickly i will uh, go through this uh, degree of bachelor degree of uh, see the contents is nomenclature of the program it is bachelor degree in uh, engineering medium of instruction is english courses offered i have told many types of courses will be there there will be a scheme of study for 175 credits and academic calendar will be there and the course duration normal duration is four years maximum duration is eight years twice of normal duration 
suppose if you doesn't complete your course by 8 years you will not be awarded with degree and you will be considered as not fit for technical education illa one nimsha mail hogi sir so there there are classification of courses as i mentioned one classification is core course elective uh, open electives professional electives and uh, laboratory courses likewise and for in each semester for both bca and uh, be student you have to register for the courses there will be an application form given in your department you have to register uh, for courses that you will be taking and uh, dropping of courses withdrawal there is regulation for that and credit based uh, semester scheme is there and uh, credit requirements 175 for regular students and the ciesc already i have told and any anyway, of this grades will be explained by uh, examination section like controller of examination next one minute one minute mail attendance requirement i'll tell you for test 1 for test 1 for bca as well as be programs you should have minimum of 60% attendance 60% otherwise i'll show you the calendar of events in that it will be it is clearly mentioned if you doesn't have 60% attendance you will not be allowed to take the test similarly after the second uh, before the second test from first test onwards to second test onwards minimum 60% attendance should be there okay at the end of the semester at the end of the semester you should have 75% attendance okay 60 and 75 i'll show you that in calendar of events and if you doesn't maintain your attendance at the end of the semester you will be considered as not eligible student not eligible students are not allowed to take uh, semester end examination you should be very careful 60% minimum you have to maintain and if you are absentee for one test in the second test again the average you have to manage like maintain okay for 40 maximum you have to score 20 from all the three events one absent will lead to a problem okay so attendance requirement is very important and those students who participate in university activities Uh, like sports or other or other uh, competitions or academic activities then if you bring the certificate from the concerned faculty or concerned uh, department you will be given attendance otherwise attendance will not be given okay you should be very careful and if you does not maintain 20 marks in cie minimum okay then you will also be even if you have attendance and if you score 19 you will be considered as not eligible student so for eligibility to sce semester and examination 75% attendance then actually 85% we will ask and if you have 75% 10% condons uh, from university will be considered based on your records what you produce health records both of the activities if you have participated if you bring that they will make it 85% otherwise you will not be considered for semester and examination so 85% and 20 marks you should maintain at the end of each semester so this examination and all they will uh, tell you examination section uh, this is about uh, 
regulations governing the degree of bachelor of engineering i am repeating once again several amendments have been made for this regulation okay like supplementary semester has been mentioned in page 17 that has been removed now okay and makeup examination is also not there okay fine you can uh, go through it next go bca adrally ah, BCA did a result move money move money MBA MCR next to that BSc that only that. Yeah, so for that one, move more than that. You can uh, directly go to uh, page three. See, general regulations and you will be offered this is for BCA students Bachelor of Computer Application degree program so you will be pro awarded with Bachelor of Computer Applications and if you maintain uh, or if you you have to qualify all the courses mentioned in your syllabus next one next next ah. and here uh, as per NEP it has been formulated and if you complete one year BCA within the period of six to eight semesters C versus three years program three years for regular and uh, double the duration again if it does not pass in six years again you will not be awarded with degree okay and here uh, in bca after uh, sixth semester you can go for additional one year to obtain bca honors degree okay that is available bca honors one year you have to stay here and additional courses you have to pass okay that is prescribed in the syllabus next to one minute for bca students the courses what we mentioned in b program it is classified as discipline core courses discipline elective in b program it is called as professional elective here it will be discipline elective courses again open elective courses will be there then ability enhancement courses skill enhancement courses and languages courses will be there okay this is the classification of courses in bca program and apart from that you can take audit courses and if you take audit courses that will not be reflected in your grade card but separate certificate will be issued okay. again course registration you have to do it every semester in the prescribed form so move my email fine. So first year you have 48 credits for BCA. Second year after 
you obtain 94 credits, you'll be awarded, if you wish, Diploma in Computer Application. In the third year, if you earn 136 credits, it will be Bachelor in Computer Applications. If you do one more additional year, you'll be awarded with honors with 176 credits. And normally, all the students will be uh, uh, considering 136 credits and they will take bachelor in computer applications degree and the rest of all it is same CIE and SCE and all okay and uh, calendar of events it will be on website it is available for both BCA and uh, BE programs uh, you can look into the calendar of events and uh, departments will follow the calendar of events for the three events that will be conducted for CIE. Okay. Any clarification if you need, you can ask me or even you can meet me later on. It's uh, academic related. So, that's about uh, academic regulations of the university. Very important, I am repeating, 85% attendance, 20 marks CIE. So that you will be eligible for SCE. And minimum marks you have to score in both CIE and SCE is 45. That is very important. So that finishes and uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Manoj Kumar sir, uh, for giving uh, detailed information about teaching, learning uh, process and uh, examination related information. Uh, next, uh, uh, we have uh, Mr. Mahadev Prasad. Uh, the, uh, he will give information about NBA and uh, outcome based education. Uh, NBA, that is National uh, uh, Board of Accreditation, accreditation uh, established under AICT in order to access, uh, assess the qualitative competence of the programs offered by educational institution. Mr. Mahadev Prasad P, uh, HOD, Department of uh, Physics, will explain about NBA. Uh, he is a NBA coordinator of our institution. He was also a technical advisor of NBA in the uh, VTU, that is Vishishraya Technological University, Belgaavi. Uh, sir, uh, over to you, sir. Ah, very good afternoon all. Madam, thank you for your brief introduction. Yeah, um, myself, Professor Mahadev Prasad. So, HOD of Department of Physics and also the coordinator of MBA and OBE practices being implemented in our university. So, the outcome-based education is what we have adopted in our curriculum, which is a very must uh, uh, curriculum that we have must design in order to uh, make sure you follow the outcome based education. So, uh, the AICT from 2018 has fixed or designed a curriculum for all the universities across the India so that every universities or the institutions irrespective of IITs and NITs, they must follow this outcome based education practices just to make sure the students are not used to that conventional method of education, but they are slightly onto the outcome based education platform. So what exactly this outcome based education is? So just one by one we see. So before we move on, I would just like to draw your attention to the curriculum that we have for your first year. 
so that uh, when I start saying about courses, when I start saying about course outcomes, program outcomes or the educational objectives, you must have an idea. So this is the first semester scheme. Probably the Manoj Kumar sir might have already shown you. So this is the scheme under the physics cycle and also we have a scheme under the chemistry cycle. Few of the branches under B will be undergoing their first semester under physics cycle and few other will be under the chemistry cycle. You know about that. So as of now, so these are the two uh, schemes that we have. What's very important here is the total credits and the number of subjects. So the number of subjects under a physics cycle would be 8 and the very next column next to the serial number what do we have is some abbreviations BSc, ESC and HSMC. So these are mandatory. So they are called or they stand for BSc stand for basic science courses, ESC stands for engineering science courses and HSMC stands for humanities, social studies and management courses. So these are compulsory as per the AACT if a university has adopted the OB practices for awarding a degree. So OB practices very simple to understand. So as an advisor, technical advisor, um, we had a interaction before we designed the OB uh, uh, framework uh, for the various universities. We had an opportunity to interact with uh, uh, some of the students who became entrepreneurs uh, after their degree uh, from various other universities of, from Japan and China. So it was an online interaction. Uh, so we were uh, uh, asking some questions like how they could become entrepreneurs, what were their motivations, uh, how could they achieve that and all. Uh, so we had a lot many questions to ask and uh, they were answering it. So one such observation was when a student joins to an institute, he or she might not be so uh, streamlined or pipelined with respect to the studies. They must also study in such a way that they should be aware of their, uh, what I can say, the problems being faced in their surrounding environment so that their study or the degree at the end should address those problems. You must know what problem that you are facing or your society is facing. With respect to that, if you have an idea about how you achieve, achieve, attain a degree or how you are achieving a particular, uh, what I can say, a skill would help in resolving such issues. So I asked a student like, oh, what was your plan? You are a computer science student. Now we are into the material science. Why so? So the student explained me like, see, sir, my government is interested in investing 40% of their economy in the material field. 40% of the economy in the material field. He is a computer science student and he had an idea about where their government is intend to put their economics in the future years. He had an idea about that. He had studied that. And also he said like, sir, nowadays the problem the entire world is facing is the disposal, material disposal or solid waste management. So I intend to take certain elective courses which addresses the solid waste management so that once after I come out of the university being graduated, I can put myself in such fields and I can implement my ideas so that my implement my idea should be supported either from the government bodies or from the private sectors. So this is what the outcome based education is addressing the problems, your own problems at first. You need to acquire such skills where first you solve your problems or the problems of the society encircling you. Then you address the other issues. When we are not able to pro solve our own problems, what's the point of we being educated or being obtaining a degree without solving the problems that we are facing? So this is what the outcome based education is. So outcome based education confirms that you will have a minimum skills from various courses gathering through various courses so that you can address these issues and you have a minimum skills so that if a private sector or a government sector is if they are able to uh, invest in that particular area then you will be taken into their consideration. So these are the things you should take it, uh, keep it in your mind when you are 
achieving or when you are selecting the open electives make sure when you are selecting the open electives you address certain issues so it's a national issue it might be it might be a state issue or it might be an issue uh, which immediately a university might be facing or a particular mysore will be facing or mcc which is facing or a moda which is facing such issues need to be addressed so then only your projects will have a value then only your a uh, thesis will have the values so this is the basic motto behind the outcome based education addressing the problems and achieving or acquiring the skills to solve those problems so this is about uh, the schemes next up, before i start uh, i have certain definitions which i will be using repeatedly here course stands for the subjects a course is not be a course when i say in future in the coming slides it will be representing the subjects like engineering mathematics introduction to c programming engineering physics uh, mechanical engineering sciences such thing and one more program here stands for the respective branches be in computer science and engineering be in mechanical engineering be in civil engineering so now uh, probably you might have been issued the Uh, kits and you might have seen the syllabus book inside the kits if you have gone through the syllabus book at every subject at the top you might see this uh, what's important here is the right bottom part the weightage share as the uh, dr manoj kumar sir was telling the split of marks is 40% and 60% among the ca and the se respectively now this is about the number of events that we will be going through the evaluation process or the assessment process which we call three assessment processes will be there two of them will be the test and one will be the event so this event is outcome based education event that means it's not an a uh, regular event like an assignment it will be an event where your skills will be tested uh here the skill it can stand for your uh communication ability your ability to do the projects your ability to deal with the uh instruments or your ability to compute certain things so this event is choice based so as you can see the uh point 2 over there sorry the point 3 the event 2 will be the skill based assessment skill based when i say the skill based your skill will be tested it's not an assignment it will be a mini project where you will be made groups and you will be asked to perform a mini project and come up with a report and an outcome and the scope for the project or you will be asked to deliver uh, seminars on the recent trends okay you have to collect the information from the sources available online or if you want an help from the lecture itself they will provide all the uh, material required only thing is you need to present to check your communication skills and as well as information gathering skills okay so the event to what we have here will be the skill based assessment here your skills will be tested so the other two are the tests which are mandatory as per the act and the skill based assessment will have the weightage of 20 marks that means out of 40 it will be having 10% Uh, sorry 10 marks so 15 each for the test and 10 marks for the event this event as i mentioned skill based so every subject whatever that you might face from first semester till the end of your uh, be will have such events uh, imbibed in your curriculum where your skill communication or computability skill or calculating skill or applicability or assessing the uh, situation all this will be tested one after the other they may do it in groups or individually you might do it okay you may give the scientific reports or just as a synopsis would be enough that will be decided by the course owner so here the course owner that means the subject owner who would be the subject owner the teacher who teaches that particular subject so that teacher will decide based on your performance in the first test what type of skill based assessment should be given to you okay they might do it in group or they might do it in like individual so it's left to the course owner so that is the first step of or uh, the one of the main uh, uh, thing about the outcome based education so your skill will be tested 
second one is the examination that you the information that you will get once you into the course uh, obviously it will be for the 100 egg marks it will be uh, reduced to a uh, proportionate it will be deducted to the 60 so uh, that is there now this is the pattern uh, uh, a quotient paper uh, would be like here and in this uh, model you can see some various columns over there apart from the question and question number and also the marks you might see the second column the third and the fourth column slightly uh, new to you not slightly it's new to you it's co co stands for course outcome and one more we have is the cd cognitive domain the third one is pi it's called as performance indicator so these are the various components that we use uh, as a protocol under outcome based education so along with the question along with the marks allotted to the question and all the uh, apart from the question number these three will be there making sure that the questions that been asked is addressing to which outcome and it's addressing what type of a performance that is expected from you and it is also addressing of what level of understanding ability that you are having when you are answering that particular question so these are the various components that we would be uh, having uh, in the question paper one is the course outcome the another one is the performance indicator the another one is the cognitive domain all the three are very must uh, in order to evaluate your ability under outcome based education now outcome based education it starts with a simple philosophy that in life what's important is it the destination or the journey is it playing or winning or is it studying or giving exams it's just a very simple philosophy not everyone can win a winner takes the medal what about the loser okay you should also have the life right so it's about the journey not the destination of course the destination we would reach unless we are not properly following the necessary journey it's about winning of course how you win is important it's not about how you accumulate sorry it's not about accumulating the knowledge it's about how you accumulate the knowledge and what type of skills that you have when that particular type of knowledge has been accumulated in you so it's the skill which is acquired by you apart from knowledge which is very important so that is the basic point of this outcome based education that's the very most thing that one must attain one must have skill plus knowledge just knowledge is a conventional method of teaching skill plus knowledge is the outcome based educational teaching so the conventional method is this every educational system follows this that is input to the system like resources resources infrastructure what type of labs you have um, classrooms how they have been uh, uh, infrastructure okay what facilities you have then what happens within the system so that is how the teacher takes the classes what resources they have used how it is been uh, deliberated to you uh, that's the second thing and the third thing is output of the system you take the examination you get the degree first class second class third class distinction so this is the conventional uh, a way of having the educational so we had this prior to the 2018 the conventional method this was the basic protocol which were followed during those years but now it's slightly different how we achieve is very important and what is achieved is also important that means your outcome will be evaluated or your outcome will be weighed so we are going to calculate what is the outcome of a student particular to that particular course that means if you are taking a course like engineering mathematics or introduction to c programming or engineering mechanics so how much you have gained with respect to the course outcome for that subject and how much for the other subjects so this is what we are going to do the calculation we call it as course outcome attainment so your attainment will be evaluated at the end of the semester so that is an another step of the outcome based education protocols 
So this outcome based education is as I said it is converse to the uh, uh, traditional education system where in the traditional ed education system was bottom up approach but our outcome based education is the top down approach. Top down approach here is as I was mentioning you need to address the problem uh, that you are facing or your people are facing or your society is facing. In order to address the follow the, those problems what type of skill you need that we have to evaluate first that we have to plan first. What skill you are supposed to acquire when you want to address your own problem what skill you need. So that is a top down approach first we see how a problem need to be solved. In order to solve the problem what a university must have in their infrastructure and must have there in their teaching learning process. So that means their educational objectives should align with respect to that particular skill that you want to attain. If educational objective is so then a university would have an educational objective but under the university we have various branches computer science we have mechanics we have we have civil we have we have polymer science. So these programs how they should align with respect to the progression program educational objectives of a university will be dependent on how they will design their program outcomes. That means apart from the program educational objectives which is uh, uh, which will be addressing the problem that you want to solve uh, upon acquiring a skill should also have an alignment with respect to the program outcome of the respective branches. So then only your skill would be addressing that problem. That means an institution should have a mission and should have a vision and with respect to that vision and mission of the institution the program such as be in computer science, be in information science or be in mechanical science should align their curriculum and that curriculum should have certain courses and under certain courses they should have certain assessment components which trains that particular skill to you. It is not just the university mission, it is not just the program outcome of the branch, it is not just the course outcome, it is also in what way you are attaining that course outcome at the end. So what kind of skill that you have attained and how you have attained is very important. So this is what the outcome based education is all about. It is a top down approach. First we see what problem we are facing. Now we have the climate issues. Now we have the solid waste management. Now we have unemployment. So you should become an entrepreneur. Okay? If you want to become an entrepreneur how the university facilitates you to become an entrepreneur. So the vision and mission statement should be in accordance to that. If the university vision and mission statement will be in accordance to that then obviously my program outcome of a particular branch should also support that. So unless I have a courses or the subjects designed to address such problems my vision and mission statement would be meaningless. So it is all about top down what skill we need based that the university mission mission based on the university vision mission the program outcome based on the program outcome the type of courses based on the type of course how you will be assessed. Is it a seminar? Will it be a any project? Will it be a case study where you go to the industry, you visit, you interact with the resource persons, then you come up with the scientific reports? All these are important. Okay, so it's about achieving, and also it's about how it is achieved. So this is outcome-based education. So it started with uh, Dr. William Spaddy. So the outcome-based education. Uh, mainly uh, it is a skill based assessment as I mentioned and also it is about continuous quality improvement. That means once you have attained something let us say you have attained certain skill how that skill has to be enhanced it is also important because skill never stops there it has to be enhanced. So in order to enhance this skill we need to have a continuous quality improvement cell where you will be contributing from your skill that how this skill can be upgraded for the future.
future days. That means there will be a feedback from your side which will be considered in order to improve this outcome based education parameters. It's not just we will be designing an outcome based education protocols and we will be following. No, we will also take the inputs from the stakeholders such as the students, even the entrepreneurs, even the industrial persons, even the uh, uh, technicians or even the experts from the various other universities in order to design this OBE protocols. So OBE is not just having a skill based, it's also having a continuous improvement for the future days. Now for the skill based assessment, uh, there are certain uh, uh, conditions like flexible time frame should be there for the students to achieve that particular skill and obviously we have maintained that in our curriculum and that will be there and also the outcomes are assessed on regular basis. That means every test your outcome will be assessed. So it is called as course outcome attainment that every teacher would do after uh, your test and based on the attainment we will have a continuous improvement uh, cell which will look into that attainment that if a particular course is not attained well what are the steps should be taken so that uh, that should be addressed the problem should be addressed should there be a different way of uh, teaching learning process or should there be a different way of uh, uh, addressing such particular concepts or should there be uh, what I can say uh, um, an aid required to explain that particular concept or the principle so all this will be addressed so this will be there if and only if the continuous improvement quality cell address uh, will be put in place so this continuous improvement quality cell will also take the input from your side that means when you have gone through a concept you get to know how it's been deliberated to you and you get to know how it's how it has reached to you to what extent it has reached to you and in uh, since however you will be checking these concepts uh, with the resources available outside you would say sir uh, you would have explained that a little more or you would have explained that little bit in this dimension or in this direction so you would have an idea like okay this concept doesn't end here it also extends further in this direction so based on that you will provide the feedback so we take this feedback for the improvement of the OB protocols so the OB protocol facilitates respecting even the outcome or the feedback from the students as well it's not always test it's not always mini project even if you are going mini project you would be facing loss of uh, lots of uh, problems and you will explain those problems and we will address that so this is how it runs now this I will skip uh, this is now as I told it happens in five stages the outcome based education the stages it's all about what the market is required when you are becoming an engineer immediately after the fourth year you should get a job right unless you have a respective or a required skill as the market is necessary market is uh, needed you will not get the job so first this is a top down approach what i was talking about first you check what market needs so based on the market needs you design the course outcomes so once you design the course outcome obviously in order to attain that outcome you need to design yourself what type of assessment process should be there in the practices if you are for example let's say i am explaining the kirchhoff law electrical engineering kirchhoff law so in the first test we would ask explain kirchhoff law obviously we will explain with a neat diagram but have you conceptualized it have you seen it practically no the assessment component or the event tool will help you in bringing in all the components that is required to understand and to demonstrate kirchhoff law so obviously you would go behind diodes breadboards resistors then capacitors you would go behind you would try to construct the circuit and then try to analyze how exactly the kirchhoff law works how this principle can be picturized so this is the skill 
it's not just conceptualizing it's also demonstrating okay so these assessment components would help you in conceptualizing and as well as demonstrating certain parameters which is as a protocol under outcome based education so the assessment will be designed in such a way where you will have yourself you will inculcate the critical thinking a creative thinking and also the communication skills in order to achieve that particular outcome the last one is based on that particular assessment how i need to design the syllabus so it is not just i design the syllabus and you study it no we design the syllabus based on what should be the assessment what type of assessment that we want to practice and that type of assessment is based on what type of skill that you are supposed to have because that skill should address the market then only you will be given job so these are the five different stages of outcome based education first we look for what is required in the market then we will design the curriculum then we will design the assessment and finally the deliberations so this is the outcome based education the protocols and this is the life cycle of the outcome based education first we plan we conduct planning is uh, framing the syllabus framing the assessment next is do we conduct it next is check after the conduction we say how much it has yield okay positive or negative we look into that if it is positive how to enhance if it is negative how to come over that means we act so we plan the curriculum we plan the assessment we run the curriculum we run the assessment we see how that assessment has helped you in achieving the skill if it has not achieved what action should be taken later on or if it is achieved how we can improve it further so this is the life cycle of the outcome based education so as i mentioned it's a top down approach uh, see the implementation is bottom up but the design is top down outcome based education market as you see the last slide it starts with market then the outcome then the assessment then the syllabus that means the implementation on the right side the arrow but the approach is top down so first we have the vision and mission of the university then program educational objectives of the university and as well as the program then we have program outcomes for the various engineering branches and then the course outcome that means under program you will be having every semester from 4 to 5 courses courses means subjects remember every courses will be having their own outcomes for example i was mentioning the kirchhoff law if i deliver the kirchhoff law if i explain it what is expected out of it it's just you understand the principle behind the kirchhoff law that's enough no you should know where it is applied and you should know if you know that principle where we can apply okay so it's not just as i mentioned conceptualizing it's also about knowing where when and how okay so this is the top down approach so this is obe so obe helps not only understanding the concepts but also where to implement how to implement what is learned and how is learned is very 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 important so these are the characteristics that i mentioned i will skip this slide as well so all this can be uh, are based on uh, a particular structure we call it as an ob structure under this ob structure in order to have a different kind of uh, attainments we follow something called bloom's taxonomy this bloom's taxonomy is nothing but uh, conditions where uh, if a question is asked so what type of uh, explanation that is required out from a student and how it has to be evaluated in what field and in what angle is what our bloom's taxonomy is about for example if i ask the question like explain kirchhoff law then you would explain so that's a different level of attainment so attainment is uh, the skill is your ability to explain or else if i ask the question like evaluate kirchhoff law 
for a given circuit. Let's say there is a circuit given, a diagram would be there in the question paper. You have to evaluate, you have to apply the Kirchhoff law, like right? so it's the application, the level is different, explanation is different, level is different. And also if I say just state Kirchhoff law, you would state the level is different. Just by stating a Kirchhoff law doesn't mean that you know how to apply the Kirchhoff law, right? So there are different stages of learning, the same concept. So those different stages of learning has been uh, briefly explained under this Bloom's taxonomy, which is like this. So there are different level of, uh, different stages of understanding a concept. One is the first, the basic most level is called level one and it's called remembering. So any question in your question paper, if it starts with define, or state or mention would stand for this remembering. That means how you can remember. The second level is level two that stands for understanding. So any question that stands for explain, describe or discuss okay, will represent this particular group of Bloom's taxonomy that is understanding. Then the level three applying, apply the Kirchhoff law to the circuit or calculate with a given data a particular parameter or compute based on the input, come up with an output. So that means your ability to apply, okay, then analyzing. Let's there, let's, let there be a situation where you have to analyze the situation and you have to come up with a proper report. That's a different level of understanding. That's a level of love, gaining the knowledge. Then evaluating. If someone has come up with a proper report, how you can evaluate it? Or you yourself addressing an issue, how you can evaluate them? Then the last one is creating. You by yourself designing a thing. So that's a highest level, level six. So more, all the courses not all the courses, the courses that has been designed under your curriculum, uh, more or less they would be addressing all the levels. They will be covering all the levels. That means starting from level 1 to level 5. Obviously, as you can see, level 6 is creating. It's a very rare case, creating. You are here to become an engineer. But at the end, you are creating. That means your projects in the final year is somewhat belongs to this level 6. So creating. So the final level 5 and level 6 are quite very rare. That means the courses addressing those two levels are very less. But most of the courses being uh, framed uh, under your uh, branches or your courses or your program, sorry, will address the first four levels, level 1, level 2, level 3 and level 4 till analyzing. But the first two year subjects, normally they would address the first three levels. That means remembering, understanding, and then applying. So these are the uh, various levels under Bloch's taxonomy based on which your ability or your skill will be tested. For example, if a question is asked, explain, let's say Kirchhoff law for 10 marks and you have explained, and after the evaluation, the marks is 8 out of 10, then the attainment would be 80%. If I say uh, there would be an apply the Kirchhoff law for a particular circuit, you will apply yourself, you will evaluate, you will come up with a proper answer for a particular parameter. Let's say it's asked for 10 marks and you have secured 6 out of 10, then the attainment is 60. So based on this attainment, we would try to revise our curriculum every year. Why? Because it's also, as I mentioned, it's a continuous quality improvement. If your attainment is low, we should see why it is low. And if your attainment is high, we should also see. So it's not just the attainment, it's also about how you attain. If I have asked, for example, the Kirchhoff law, explanation 80% but applying the Kirchhoff law 60% 
lot of variations in the attainment. That means we cannot ignore the application level because you are your engineer student. We must check ourselves what kind of methodologies that we have to adopt ourselves so that in future you should improve the application ability. So the continuous quality improvement cell confirms that. So it helps in improvising the methodologies or the protocols in order to have a better attainment with respect to the skill. Explaining skill is different, applying skill is different, analyzing skill is different. So like this, various skills will be there based on which you will be, okay, you will be having a proper teaching learning process in your courses. So this is one particular uh, uh, set of course outcomes for, for introduction in C programming. Uh, you, will, you will be uh, going through this with respect to the syllabus once you get the syllabus book. Uh, so hierarchy as I mentioned, uh, it starts from level 1 to level 6. So most of the subjects would address the first 3 to 4 levels. Understanding, remembering and explaining, max to max analyzing. And the final semester or the final year subjects might address the higher level that is level 5 and level 6. Okay. So I was mentioning about the program outcomes. The program outcomes have been uh, designed by the AACT. Uh, it's common for all the institutes come under AACT. So we have 12 uh, program outcomes. It's also called graduated attributes. Okay. So our course outcome should stand in uh, uh, accordance with respect to this program outcomes. That means when we are designing a statement or when we are designing the concept, we must make sure all these program outcomes or any of this program outcome is addressed. So once the uh, regular classes starts, uh, every teacher as a mandatory, they would be explaining this OB practices, not just OB practice, the course outcome, program outcome and all, and how they are interrelated to one another, they would explain. So remember, outcome-based education is all about what knowledge you have acquired, how you have acquired, and how we are going to deliberate it. Okay. So this is one such COPO mapping. Okay, three, two, one stands for high, medium, and low. If a statement is there, like student would be able to explain the Kirchhoff law, and uh, if that matches with the first program outcome, which stands for scientific knowledge, for example, scientific knowledge is the program outcome statement and your course outcome statement is ability to explain Kirchhoff law, then it maps high. Okay, it is high. So it stands for three. So all these circles is just to make sure you have a proper way of achieving the knowledge. So these are the uh, basic protocols under, uh, so this is our OB structure of JSS Science and Technology University. It's a university vision mission, first we state, addressing the market requirement, then we will have the department vision mission, then we would have the uh, program educational objectives, which we will design, then we review them, the statements, uh, changes is required, then again we will put forward to the, uh, uh, the stakeholders for the improvement. Stakeholders would be you, the job uh, providers, entrepreneurs, even the uh, experts, subject experts from the industries, research institutes and also from the premier institutes such as IITs and NITs. So all of them will be contributing in designing this particular uh, curriculum. So starting from university vision mission till the course outcome. So these are the OB practices which I wanted to explain about uh, the uh, implementation in our university. So this is the vision of our uh, university, this is the mission once you get the uh, syllabus book you get to see that okay so any uh, doubts uh, in this we can discuss it later so with this I welcome you all to the esteemed campus of JSS Science and Technology University and I wish all the best in your future thank you Thank you, Professor uh, Mahadev Prasad, sir, uh, for uh, giving uh, a detailed information about OBE. Our next uh, uh, professor is ready, sir, uh, Dr. Anil Kumar K.M. is a professor and associate dean 
uh, ranking accreditation and uh, analytics of our university uh, he will be giving information uh, about our university ranking Yeah, very good evening. Yeah, I know it's a time, you know, this is the time that you used to always leave the campus, correct? Yeah, don't worry, you know, I'll just take uh, maybe 15 minutes. Okay, so maybe 20 minutes then. Okay, I'll try to complete as, uh, as fast as possible. Okay, so my topic is very interesting, right? It's very interesting, why? Because, you know, we discussed something about ranking and rating. So most of the universities, you know, like uh, they've been ranked. So I think you know the significance of what is ranking and rating and all that, right? So in that regard, I'll be talking about how we have been ranked, what are the different agencies that we have uh, been ranked, how the process is done, where we are and all that. You know, it'll take only a few minutes. Okay, so just bear with us for some more time. And after that, you know, we can just leave. Yeah, so basically when we talk about ranking, we know what is ranking, right? Ranking is basically probably when you started uh, your journey after your second PUC or 12th, everybody wanted to be a, you know, become, uh, get into a professional college. And that is that particular time that people start looking for colleges. And people lo start looking for colleges and they also look for rankings as well. Like, you know, I don't know whether you have uh, already, uh, you, you have done that, but many, many of the students, you know, they would do that. So they would try to understand, you know, what is the ranking of a particular university? Say, for example, in Karnataka, if in case you happen to be from Karnataka, so you say, okay, I just want to be one of, in the, one of the most top, most ranked uh, uh, colleges or universities. That's what, you know, people, we or students will be aiming at. So in that regard, you know, ranking becomes very, very important for us, not only as a student, but also as a university, as a college, we also have to, you know, maintain as well as, you know, we also have to increase our standings as well. Okay, so that becomes a lot of responsibility on the university as well as the institute to ensure that we are in the good top ranked positions. Okay, so when we talk about ranking, you know, usually rankings are conducted by government of India. So basically it's conducted by two agencies. One is the government of India. And the other one is basically done by private uh, players. Like, for example, you have so many private players who do uh, different types of ranking. So one of the most significant uh, rankings that we are aware of is basically, you know, that there are two important rankings that is conducted by uh, the government of India. One is what we call as the NIRF. How many of you have heard about NIRF? Oh, very good. So NIRF is one of the ranking that, you know, government of India conducts. So basically what happens is, this particular ranking, it tries to rank the number of institutes or universities uh, in different categories. For example, you have a category called as engineering, you have a category called as uh, uh, university as a whole, you have a category called as research, and so many components are there. So it tries to categorize it, uh, in those, uh, you know, the in institutes in those uh, categories, and at the same time, they try to award ranking. But nonetheless, you know, uh, you have a lot many universities, you know, today, today I think, you know, more, more than 3000 uh, institutes all over India. So they participate in, in this particular uh, ranking system, especially that is conducted by the government of India under the NIRF banner. In addition to it, there is also one of the very important uh, ranking, which is called as ARIA. So how many of you have heard about something called ARIA? So ARIA, I think, you know, most of you have not heard about ARIA. So ARIA stands for, you know, basically, uh, it focuses on something called uh, innovations. So basically, it, you know, it tries to focus on two important things. One is 
innovation like for example how innovation is encouraged and supported in your university or institutions does your institute have something called the innovative laboratory does it have something called the space for uh, students to take up their innovation put it into something called poc we call it as proof of concept or does it have a place where the you know the ideas that actually conceptualized it can be implemented and then do you have a space where it can be marketed like you know for example you have something called it hubs do all these facilities exist in the campus because you know these are the things that, you know it's 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 a well known truth that you know like most of the things that you see today for example one of the biggest invention that you have seen is google so google actually came with what it it the whole concept was you know it was conceived in a campus so people started you know the students uh, you know the brin and the others you know they started the whole idea in the campus and they were able to materialize that campus convert it into a product and now a big google is a big hit so arya focuses on something like does your college does your institute have those kind of facilities and based on those facilities we will be evaluated and then you know we'll be given a grade so that's how the these two important rankings becomes very very uh, you know uh, important for all the institutes and universities in addition to it you have all the private players for example you have something like you know india today you have education post you have outlook you have open times of india and all of the other uh, different types of ranking agencies who will be you know will be inviting uh, the institutions to participate in those kind of rankings and based on that you know they will be categorizing or all allotting uh, different ranks now when we talk about uh, ranking so what are the different parameters that they consider what are the parameters that they expect from a university from an institute like you know the the parameters are very very stringent it's not something like uh, you know uh, somehow you know we can manage no it's definitely cannot manage so it's very stringent for example you know the parameters like teaching learning uh, resources like they'll be looking at the number of students that you are enrolled for example you know there are colleges where the number of admissions have come down like for example some colleges because of different reasons so you know admissions become very important at the same time the number of students who are doing research especially you know people or uh, students who have uh, you know done their masters and after doing their masters they want to do pursue research so how many such doctoral students are available in your university or an institute plays a very important role so that's where uh, you know the teaching learning resource becomes very important and at the same time are the faculties in the campus on a permanent basis you know that's also a important measure whether you bring somebody on a hot hat basis and then you know after one semester they are lost or they are you know they are dis they disappear is that the kind of trend that they follow in your institution so that's why you know uh, uh, the emphasis on permanent faculty is a very important criteria and also how many teachers or faculties in your institutions or a university have experiences because you know it's a well known fact that uh, teachers with good experiences can be a very important factor in your in the academic development you know whether it is something like projects or whether it is something like you know interdisciplinary activities whatever so they play a very important role and how many such faculties have phd's so all these are the very important measures that is considered and at the same time how much of money is spent on academic initiatives so that also becomes very important and all these important parameters are part of what is called as the teaching learning resource so that becomes a very important part and at the same time you have research so probably you are very new uh, you know very new and uh, fresh you have set your foot in this particular campus probably some of you have a no knowledge of what exactly research is but some of you may not be having an idea what exactly is research is but nonetheless research plays a very important role for universities growth and universities identified by the research outcomes or research publications or the kind of project that people do so based on that there'll be many companies many uh, industries that visit because of this research and other activities that takes place so therefore every university will be focusing and showcasing the different types of project works and research works that they would be doing so that becomes very important and uh, patents so i'm happy to tell you that you know like last year that is 2023 2022 so we had we had around something like you know 8 to 10 patents that was filed from this particular university so therefore you know patents also matters because at the end of the day 
you know how innovative you are becomes you know, a measurable metric so therefore patents is also one of the important metrics here and then you have something called projects so projects is what you know basically there are two two, two ways at looking at it so there are projects where students undertake this project work and they get funded and at the same time there are some project works that the professors get for their uh, based on their you know the research statements or the problem statements and they also get funded from different sources maybe from industry so industry would fund it and at the same time they have uh, the central government also funding it so that becomes very important why because we had what is known as kami we have companies like ibm we have companies like cisco we have companies like benz funding uh, innovative projects of the students so that becomes very very important you know because at the end of the day the people will ask you uh, when you are taking for the uh, placement or others whether you have got some kind of funding for your innovative projects that you have done the first question they will ask is not funding but they will ask you something like what kind of innovative projects you have done so and based on that they'll ask you whether did you receive any kind of funding from the institute or from the private uh, industries so this becomes very important and once a very important measures for uh, you know the ranking and then you have uh, other metrics like uh, the graduation outcome so these are something like how whether you know the students how many students passed and all that and how many students are enrolled in this particular uh, uh, you know uh, in in this particular universities and how many have graduated as a phd uh, uh, after completing the phd and then uh, there are something like outreach activities outreach activities can be something like how many students are coming from different areas whether they are coming from the same place whether they are coming from different place in karnataka or from other states as well as other countries so this becomes a very important uh, measure and at the same time how many students are economically challenged and physically challenged and all these things becomes very important because they see how university is supporting them okay for example physically challenged student if they are enrolled how university is supporting them in all different uh, ways in their academic progression and at the same time the last one is what we call as peer perception peer perception is basically how your employers how your alumni how the other students would look at your university how well they look at the university so based on all these parameters you have what is called as the ranking that is given by the nirf so therefore these are some of the very important parameters that are basically used not only by nirf but also by other uh, ranking agencies so this is uh, the result that we have got in nirf for 2023 so basically what we did is we have got you know uh, we were uh, in the uh, in the uh, the band of 150 to 200 so in the engineering category so that is our position last uh, year and uh, when we talk about something like arya so arya as i've told you it stands for innovation so how innovative you are so how innovative how innovation is supported facilitated in the campus so in that so we had uh, you know we obtained an excellent band the previous year and uh, the last year we obtained something called we were in the band of 100 to 150 in addition to it we had uh, you know other uh, achievements like for example we were actually uh, ranked nationally as 14th state rank of 5th and the zonal rank of 5th in the overall top university under private category so university under the private category and at the same time uh, we were also ranked nationally as fifth based on the faculty best faculty and also national rank third and the state rank one based on uh, the uh, the employability that is the placement aspect so we were also ranked uh, uh, national rank 3 and state rank 1 and at the same time uh, we were ranked fourth state rank 1 and zonal rank 2 uh, for private university for doing their btech and mtech programs okay and uh, again we were also ranked uh, national rank 7th and the state rank 2 under the top 10 best university private category okay so i'm talking about the private category and again we were also you know we were also ranked as 50th rank best engineering college by career 360 so career 360 is you know it's uh, an online uh, uh, ranking and rating system you know they collect feedbacks again these are collected by their own we have no participation in this part, you know so they have collected on their own because they collect reviews from different sources based on that we have got something like the 50th rank national wide 
uh, by Career 360. And then we also got uh, something like the 28th rank by uh, the India Today. So India Today ranked us 28th for uh, engineering. And again, uh, Career 360 also ranked us as the 20, 37th as the India's best young universities because you know we are a young university. We started in 2016 as a university. So we are a young university. So we are 37th ranked by uh, Career 360. Outlook again, Outlook uh, is uh, uh, Outlook ranked us 21st by the Outlook uh, for engineering. And again, uh, as a private university, we were ranked 24th. And again, there is another uh, there is another magazine called as Open, which ranked us as the seventh rank in the state at the state level, and eleventh rank in the zonal level. Okay, so those are the ranking. In addition to the ranking, we also have something called the rating system. So rating system is basically helping us to ensure that we follow, uh, you know, we follow all the processes effectively, all processes effectively. So based on the processes. There will be an external number of external members who will, who will audit the, the process that we have done, undergone. And based on that, we have something called, uh, we were awarded the gold standard. So gold standard was awarded uh, for us uh, in uh, 2020 and this was valid till 2023. So we are in the process of renewing it. We are also going for uh, the another process, audit process. And then uh, you also have something called the accreditation. So accreditation, basically, we have something called uh, the, at the university level, we have something called the NAC accreditation. So NAC accreditation is underway. So basically, we'll be trying to submit uh, the, the, you know, the required documents in due course of time. And then we have uh, the NBA. So NBA stands for uh, the National Board of Accreditation. So this particular uh, National Board of Accreditation is valid only for or is applicable only for the programs. So we have different number of programs, like for example, computer science, uh, biotechnology, these are the different programs. So to get accreditation program wise, we go for what is called as MBA, but as a university as a whole, we go for what is called as the NAC. So these are the two uh, accreditation process that we have. So NAC, we are going, we are uh, you know probably submitting all the documents by December. And as far as the NBA is concerned, most of the departments have been accredited. So these are some of the achievements that we have, you know, like most of our students have participated in most of the events that are conducted annually and in most of the, uh, you know, national and international venues, like uh, most of them have won uh, the hackathons and other events that we've conducted. We have also conducted, you know, the international conferences in the last year, whatever I'm just showing, trying to show. It's only the glimpse of 2023 or 2022, 23. Okay. So a lot of activities, both uh, outreach activities, then you have uh, the racing activities undertaken by students and cultural activities. And also a lot of students have brought uh, laurels to what is called as the sporting activities and other things. And there are a lot of clubs we have. Okay. So I think uh, probably you had an explanation or probably you had a session on uh, the different types of clubs that you have. So roughly around 24 clubs are available in the JC campus. So roughly 24. Uh, it starts from, uh, you know, the technical to non-technical, cultural, photo. There's something called photon, you know, the photography club. There's something called Sahas, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the adventurous club. A lot of clubs are available. So, you know, you can just have a, a look at those clubs. Yeah, I think this is the end. Okay, so I just want to tell you that, you know, SJC or JSA Science and Technology is a campus of opportunities. Okay, so this is what I tell everybody who have enrolled for this particular campus. It's a, it's basically a campus of opportunities for what we want to become. So I don't know what you want to become, but you want to become a technologist, you want to become a researcher, you want to become an entrepreneur, you want to become an innovator, what? It's up to you. But only thing is you have all the facilities available in the campus. All the facilities are available in the campus. It's only use all the opportunities you get in the campus to be a better educated person. So all the very best for your new academic engagements. Thank you.
thank you dr anil kumar sir uh, for uh, detailed information about uh, ranking accreditation and uh, analytics uh, all are ready to go <laughs> okay uh, it this is the end of the session today's uh, uh, um,